everybody. We just got to the nursery and loaded up everything I wanna buy. All right, just checking out of this nursery. I'm gonna show you guys everything I got and how to plant these and where I'm gonna plant these. I just got back from the nursery. Check out what I got. I stocked up. So we're doing our spring planting and I'm just kind of updating my garden here. I have a lot of open spaces here that can be filled in. Purple romaine lettuce. So those will need to be in a shady area. I might have to go into a different part of my garden for that. This is a grape, golden chalice. So I'd like to get that grape like right here and have it grow up and then kind of cover this whole wall. So that'll be excellent use of space. All right guys, so I got our hole dug right here. A little bigger than the pot size. The soil in here is already really good, but we're gonna add some more amendments. Okay, so I have this little dirt pile. Now we're gonna add the amendments to this pile and then we'll mix this up and then we'll use this as a backfill. Okay, so first up is going to be, okay, this is insect frass. Let's give it about that much. We're just gonna kind of use our hand. Maybe that's like a half a cup. Okay, this is rock dust. Um, I would say that's about three tablespoons. This one's called a growing minerals, volcanic rock dust. So this will add vitamins and minerals to your food. Here's another type of rock dust, cascade minerals, soil boosters made from natural rock minerals. Good source of iron, calcium, magnesium more fruits and vegetables. Okay, so we got about, I think we got about, that's maybe half a cup, maybe four tablespoons. Okay, so moving on. Okay, this is a couple things that you eat, really definitely want to use. Worm castings is probably the ultimate fertilizer that you want to use every time. Unless you have worms that are growing in your garden, and producing worm castings. Um, it's always good to add some of this. So we're gonna add, I'm gonna say like two or three cups, or two or three handfuls. Okay, put that aside. This is called Bose Biodynamic Compost. Okay, it has wood chips, straw, yarrow, chamomile, stinging nettle, dandelion, oak bark. So again, the more diverse your, your soil is, usually the better. Now this is one of my ones I really like as well. This is homemade kelp meal. You guys can go back and watch a, a video I made on homemade kelp meal. Let's go ahead and mix this. I'm gonna do about uh, a cup Look at those different chunks of sizes, uh, all from the ocean. I'll put a link above to that video. So about a cup of that, that has a lot of, um, I think 70 or 80 different trace minerals in the kelp and it smells really good. Okay, humic acid. Humic acid is really good as well. This is dry from ancient remains of organic plant materials may increase micronutrient uptake. So this is always good to add as well. Excellent fertilizer. We're gonna give it about, let's see about that much. Maybe like three tablespoons. And let's go ahead and just mix this up. Just kind of go like that, or you can use a shovel or blend it really well. So this is a nutrient-dense 
super soil blend now. You want to lay it to the side. I can kind of tap it right there. That usually loosens the roots. And then you can kind of pull that out. This is when it takes two hands. Okay, I'm going to set the camera. We're going to go ahead and set this in. But what I want to do here is before we put this root ball down, I'll show you what we're going to do. We're going to flatten it kind of out and we're going to put the mycos right on top of the soil here. Now you can see I've got a quite a bit of roots. What we're going to do is take this mycos. I'm going to sprinkle it directly We're going to take this and kind of spread it all the way around the roots like this. Flip this over. We're going to get this directly on the roots. Just like that all the way around. Okay, we'll sprinkle some on the bottom of the hole. Okay, that's pretty good. And we'll set this in. Okay, just like this. So this is a Pro tip, if you guys aren't using the mycos or the mycorrhizal fungi, um, you're really missing out. Okay, now it's looking pretty good, good height. Let's go ahead and take our soil that we just mixed up. This is our backfill. There might be a little bit left over. Let's go ahead and Sprinkle some around. Now, what I probably should have done is sprinkled a little bit of this amended soil right on the bottom. But see, I'll lift it up just a little bit. Some of that soil will fall around the edges. I still want to allow it for three inches of mulch. So you don't want to plant it too high and then not have enough room to lay the mulch. Oh, that's looking really good. Let's go ahead and cover this with mulch now. Push this back over it. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so right here we have a lot of room. This, this tall fence right here is perfect spot to put corn because um, there's not many things we can grow right up against the fence, tall and narrow. So what we're gonna do is push this mulch out of the way and we're gonna plant corn right along the edge of this. I got this sweet corn, non-GMO, which is important. You don't wanna be growing GMO corn. Okay, so I got six. I'm gonna divide it equally so they're spaced equally right along here. That'll look nice. Okay. It's come out pretty easily. First, I'm gonna lay them out. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of this mycorrhizal fungi. We're gonna sprinkle a little bit in the hole, just about like that, and then we're gonna take the corn, set it in there like that, and then simply push the dirt around it. This is something you really want to do if you want your plants to really take off. Another one. All you need is, you know, no more than like a tablespoon. Okay, we'll do the rest of these and then we'll push the mulch back around it, like so. And then we'll water these. 
That looks pretty cool. It's always good to hang on to the label too. Okay, let's water that really good. Check on this a little bit later. Should be off to a really good start. Okay, these will be off to a great start, especially after using those that mycos, mycorrhizal fungi. I'm telling you, it makes a big difference. And then that thick layer of mulch. Okay guys, check out all these different cool peppers I got. I got a lot of exotic, different varieties that you typically do not see in a store. Now, this one right here is called a Trinidad Scorpion. Sounds very hot. Pepper Chocolate Habanero. Gypsy Sweet. Pepper Candy Cane Chocolate Cherry. Wow, that sounds amazing. Pepper Manzano Orange. And then Pepper Cas Cascabella. Before you start digging and installing the plants, set them in place where you think they're gonna go and get a feel for the spacing and the layout. So I think that's gonna look pretty good with these strawberries right here. We have a grape I just put in right here. It'll kind of fill in and give it some shade in the front. And then we have these different peppers it's good to probably find out which ones are going to be the largest and put the larger uh, growing varieties towards the back. Let's go right here. Let's see, here's another one. I could probably put another one right here, right next to this tree. This will create some shade in this area under this tree as well. So it's good to go kind of around the trees. Here's a chocolate one. Maybe right here could be a good spot. These are probably little smaller varieties, I'm guessing. Let's see, let's go right over here. That might be a good spot. And then I think over there, this one might be good. Okay guys, what we're gonna do is, let me show you how I'm gonna plant this one. We're gonna do it fairly simple. First thing we're gonna do to that hole, we're gonna add some worm castings. I'm gonna do maybe a cup. Half a cup, about a half a cup of the uh, Malibu compost, biodynamic compost, the worm castings, and then we're gonna do some of the seaweed, Let's give some of the seaweed fertilizer. Okay, I'm gonna just stir it up in this hole. Okay, and I'm gonna push it to the side, double check that my plant is the right height. Okay, I need to go a little deeper, I think. Okay, so we have the hole amended. Now I wanna add the mycos, mycorrhizal fungi. Again, very important. One of the most important things you can do. Okay, so we put that in. So it's, the roots are sitting directly on it, and then we'll push that dirt back around it. Okay, let's push the mulch back around it. Yeah, these strawberries should do very well. Okay, a bunch of peppers to put in back here. This is the Trinidad Scorpion. Mulch back around it. Okay, over here we got the pepper chocolate habanero. Let's dig a hole here for it. Okay, one other thing that I'm adding that I didn't add before, alfalfa meal. This is actually really good for promoting accelerated growth and plant development. So this is a good natural organic fertilizer as well. Very inexpensive. So it's gonna really help accelerate, get these plants started as well. So we're gonna go ahead and sprinkle it on top. I didn't mix it in. This is fine to do a top dressing as well. 
all of this will eventually break down into the soil. Okay, it's time to get some water on this. It's looking good. This alpha alpha, you can use a lot of it too. It smells, it smells really nice as well. Okay hey guys, let's go ahead and water all this down, wash off all the plants and foliage, wash off the planter. We're gonna soak this really good. Now a good reason to plant these close together is so we can create a lot of shade. You don't want your soil exposed to the sun, so it's always good to have either a thick layer of mulch or some type of vegetation growing over the top of your soil. So as these plants get bigger in the spring here, they're gonna start shading the soil out so it'll actually dry up a little slower. I wanna, it won't just evaporate in the sun during the hot day because this, this is a very hot area. This is going to be amazing. All right, guys, well, stay tuned because this is going to be really fun watching these grow. So we'll check on these in a month or two and see how the progress is. Right now it's March, I think, 11th. Okay, guys, we'll check this a little later. I think we're good with the watering.